about a little bit of Star Wars. Being that it's May the 4th, let's talk about Star Wars. Uh, here's the thing. I am very disappointed in this franchise right now. <laughs> I, um... I, I'm, I'm, you know, a big nerdy dude. And uh, I watched all of the Star Wars movies. I've watched most of the animated shows. Um, I haven't seen the new season of Clone Wars. And I haven't seen Resistance. Uh, and I plan on it. But I haven't done that yet. Here's what I'll say. Um, I was a big fan of it. I mean, when I was a kid, I watched the movies. I watched the original movies. And it was, like, incredible, right? Like, it was like Space Samurais. Uh, this is this is crazy. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then, and then there was a, uh, Empire was, Empire was not, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I was particularly able to handle, uh, what happens at the end of Empire, because I thought Darth Vader was lying to Luke Skywalker about being his dad, and, uh, when, when I was a kid, like, I just couldn't fucking come to grips with that, right? Like, it's just not something that, like, a child can come to grips with is like the bad guy is the dad like that's not and then I was just like no I, because of my shitty relationship with my dad I was just like no that's actually possible that's <laughs> that's that's like a real thing that can happen uh but what was cool about Star Wars it, you know it well I'll, I'll say what was cool about Return of the Jedi was that there it wasn't this like um it was a redemption arc for Vader, and Luke putting the, the lightsaber down is what creates that redemption arc for Vader. And I thought that was a really cool moment. Uh, so, you know, I, I went back to rewatch them. I think I've rewatched them twice. And, I, you know, you kind of got to put your rose colored nostalgia glasses on when you watch it. And,. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, it's been a long time since I've seen Empire. I think I've recently seen um, Return of the Jedi in a hotel room. I watched it, you know, just kind of sitting there taking care of some emails and uh, waiting for waiting for, for gig time. And I still like I still like Return of the Jedi. I know there are some people that don't like Return of the Jedi, but I still like Return of the Jedi. I think it's a fun movie. Um, I like Empire a lot. New Hope is fine. <laughs> like, it's not the best in the trilogy. Um, and it's fine. But after that, I mean, I remember watching the original ones when I was a kid, too. I, I went to uh, see it in theaters. Um, and uh, I remember being very excited. Like, I thought Darth Maul was, like, super cool as a villain. Like, I was just like, how are they going to... Two, he's a, he's a double-bladed space samurai with horns? This guy's crazy. How did that happen? You know, that was really neat. Um, the second movie is fine. <laughs> Attack of the Clones is fine. I remember it being fine. Uh, I remember walking out of the theater being like, "That ah, that was that was a movie that happened. It had to. It had characters and seemed to have some sort of a plot point." Uh, and there were some lightsaber battles. Um, third movie, I, I enjoyed Revenge of the Sith. Uh, I gotta be honest, I remember uh, very much enjoying Re Revenge of the Sith. And um, the, you know, the Obi-Wan, Anakin Skywalker battle uh, was um, was pretty, I mean, I, I, I remember, be, like, I was, like, pretty impressed by that battle, that the whole CG battle uh was you know i mean it's ridiculous but it's also like we are talking about a society of space samurais here so maybe we shouldn't be like but the science of them fighting in the lava they talk about the force okay they're basically like telepaths and telekinesis and and possibly some alchemists okay so i don't know the force shield there you go boom boom question answered let's not <laughs> let's not overwhelm when we go through the sides of but they're in the lava pits and it's just like all right there's the guy that can shoot electricity out of his hands what what do you got for that one is it because it's science fiction <laughs> you know like people freak out about it um overall uh you know i i don't know i think the 
the prequel trilogy was like, yeah, we all knew Anakin was going to become Vader. Like, that was sort of the fucking point of it. And then I... I thought Rogue One was incredible. Like, it, it, I think it's the best story, uh, best Star Wars story. Uh, the characters are really well written. The uh, the story was very interesting to watch. Um, and holy shit, that end. That end, holy shit, you guys. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen Rogue One, this is, there, there are going to be some spoilers in this, but that end when fucking Vader just... When you see that lightsaber launch, I was like, that is one of the most, like, intense and scary scenes in, uh, you know, <clears throat> in all of the Star Wars franchise, in my opinion. And then we get to the sequel trilogies. And I really wanted to like them. I really, really did. Uh, but... You know, I have no problem with having a female protagonist. I have no problem with having a black Jedi. Like, Mace Windu was one of the most powerful Jedis of all time. Like, he pretty much almost murdered the Emperor, you know. Like, and the Chosen One had, like, problems with defeating the guy, right? Like, you know, like, Luke Skywalker had issues with defeating Emperor Palpatine. But Mace Windu was just like, I'm gonna fuck you up. And then he did. Um, and if it wasn't for Anakin's bitch ass, like, he would have <laughs> he would have finished the whole thing. Um, so, you know, it's like the identity politics, the, the identity of the protagonists has no bearing on whether I like or dislike a character. What I will say is I think, um, Ray and, uh, Kylo and, uh, all these new characters that were introduced, like they just weren't developed very well. And then you know, there's these random points of development where they switch directors and they didn't really have a coherent storyline throughout all three movies. So it was like, oh, J.J. Abrams wanted to make a New Hope fanfic um, and just introduced a bunch of new characters. That's cool. And then the second movie was like, oh, Ryan Johnson seems to be trying to tell an original story from after J.J. Abrams' New Hope fanfic. And then... The last one was like, oh, it looks like J.J. Abrams is trying to do an Empire plus a Return fan fiction. Uh, and I've bitched about all these movies. And if you want to see me bitch about all these movies at greater length, uh, I went on my friend's podcast, P.O. Vincent. My friend Vincent Didiano and I uh, talked, about, um, talked about the movies. And here's the thing is when I watch these movies in the theater, I do have a good time watching them. Like, I have fun watching them because I'm with my friends, you know, like I'm with my loved ones, I'm, 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 I'm enjoying their company, and there are some very cool scenes in these movies, like the lightsaber duels and everything, and like, you know, there's some cool themes that are addressed throughout the movies, but they're like kind of half-witted. Like, one of the things is, it, um, it, you know, there's that lady general with the purple hair and she just like won't tell poe what she plans on doing and then she makes him feel like an asshole for her not giving him information i was just like what is happening like why didn't you just tell him like it seems like it would have been fine if you told him you know and and it was just like the men and it was just like that's not no she just didn't tell like that's a communication problem more than an identity problem right and it, it, so there were these subtle things that i feel like um, the sequel's just I, fucked up, and then not, and then beyond that too, it's just like it's bad. It was bad plot structure. Like there wasn't really a through line. Each movie by itself could have just been its own thing, and if it had been its own thing, and they would have I, like made three separate Star Wars movies, I'm sure they would have been fine, right? But you know, I gotta say, a uh, little disappointed. I will say the animated series are way fucking better. They're way better. They explore the lore um, in a lot deeper way. They tell the story in a lot better way, in a lot more entertaining way, because uh, they have a long form way of doing it, and they explain stuff. Like even when I was a kid, like I was like, I don't really understand what any of this shit is, but it's it's cool. Like there's like laser swords and shit. Uh, but you know, when you kind of look at it, like the animated series really explore the universe of Star Wars, of what was created. Like Rebels is a really good show. Um, Clone Wars is a really good show. 
I'm sure resistance is fine. Although I heard resistance is more like Kitty than like Rebels and Clone Wars gets into some deep shit. You know, like they get it, they get kind of intense, especially like Rebels. Once you get into season two, gets pretty, pretty. It, there, there's some intense themes um, in there, and same thing with Clone Wars. So you know, I enjoyed the animated shows than it more than I did the fucking movies. I don't think it's that here here's here's the honest most honest opinion and my good friend Mark Viola and I have this conversation a bunch is it's not a great franchise. <laughs> Sorry. It's kinda not a great franchise. You know, like it's it's okay, it's fine. It does the it does the job, it's fun it's fun. But uh but uh, you know, it's not a it's not a particularly good franchise. It um it has more misses than it does hits. Uh, you know, if, if we, if we have to compare it, I would say that I, I'm probably a bigger Star Trek fan than I am a Star Wars fan at this point, uh, in my life. And, and that wasn't the case when I was a kid, you know, through, through my teens and into my early twenties, like I was way more into Star Wars than I was into Star Trek. And now, you know, I'm just like, Trek's got it. Trek wins. You know, they have far superior shows, far superior movies, their universe is better built out. That's where I stand on that. Happy May the 4th, everybody. Happy May the 4th. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? If you enjoyed this video, there is more stuff like this coming on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to make sure you're getting updates about my videos. Make sure you hit that like button. Because uh, I think there's a dislike campaign happening on the channel. <laughs> there's like one person that's just disliking all my shit. That's weird. Um... Uh, but uh, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the share button. Get the word out about this channel. Uh, and there are going to be more videos like this. But if you enjoy this video and you want to be a part of the live comedy experience in this virtual world that we're living in now, uh, where, uh, where all the performance art is going virtual uh, for the time being, you can join my Zoom live stand-up comedy shows. It's called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Show. Uh, the first one is on May 8th. Uh, and they will be consecutively every other week. All of the dates are available on my website right now, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Go grab your tickets right now. They're only five bucks. Five bucks gets you in, um, and it's five bucks per residence, not five bucks per person. Uh, it's just to grab you a spot. Uh, so go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com grab your ticket come hang out with me uh if you can you can become a sustaining member over on the website sustaining members get free tickets uh to come see the zoom virtual citizen revolution comedy show um or you can make a one-time donation as well uh but all of this stuff helps keep me afloat uh keeps me uh being able to put food on the table uh and cover all of my bills and expenses uh, to make sure that I'm putting out regular content. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Hope to see you again. Stay safe.